Interchangeable lenses are awesome. Zoom, macro, fast, wide, fisheye. They give you the flexibility to have the right tool for the right job. In this video, we'll be looking at a cheap alternative to purchasing a wide-angle lens. And by cheap, I mean really cheap. And that should raise a red flag right there. eBay is full of very interesting, very low price bits and pieces for your camera. By simply typing in your camera's brand name, the keyword wide, and your filter diameter, you should be able to get any number of Chinese-based companies pushing their lens adapters as wide-angle solutions. For the common filter widths, such as 52mm and 58mm, you should be able to get an adapter for as little as $10. This sounds awesome, as a cheap wide-angle lens might set you back as much as $400, depending upon the aperture and the features. In this case, I opted for the digital high definition 0.5 times super wide angle lens with macro Japan optics, which I will call the wide lens adapter or just adapter. Allegedly, this company who makes it is called Niwa. There is an instruction leaflet which has enough instruction and stats to be useful, and the adapter comes with a nice black leather look bag. The adapter has a rear cap, which is a filter thread cap, while the front cap is a simple friction cap. The optics look clear and solid, and the whole adapter allegedly weighs 120 grams, but mine weighed only 106 grams, so either I'm missing some glass or there was a problem with the measurement of mass somewhere. The adapter attaches by screwing into the filter thread of your existing lens. In this case, we are attaching the adapter to a 40mm f.2 lens that has a 52mm thread for its filter. So what results can we expect? This is the standard view from the 40mm f2.8. It's nice and sharp from edge to edge. We are using a crop sensor camera on this full frame lens and there's no issue with vignetting. This is the same image with the wide angle adapter attached to the front of the 40mm lens. <laughs> and what do we notice? Looking more closely now at the left side of both full images scaled to 720p. On the left side of this screen is the lens without an adapter. On the right side has the wide adapter fitted. At f2.8, the adapter is a disaster. The image is basically destroyed at the edges. Remember, this is a scaled image and not a crop zoom. At f8, the quality of the wide adapter improves quite a bit, but still no any good. At f16, the quality of the wide adapter is somewhat reasonable at 720p resolution. Only somewhat, though. So what does a 100% crop look like? We're looking at now the full-scaled image at f16 with the wide adapter attached. With the subject and focal point much farther back, we are less likely to have issues with a curved depth of field. This is a 100% crop of the top left-hand corner of the image. At f16, it's terrible. There's chromatic aberration, Gaussian blur, it's just junk. At f8, is it worse? It's hard to say. It doesn't really matter because both are awful. And at f2.8, I really can't tell the difference. It's just terrible. Well, the good news is that f2.8 may be as good as f16, but the bad news is that f16 is terrible. Well, at least you're getting an ultra-wide view more than double the field of view, right? Because that's what's advertised. But it doesn't look quite like that. This is the wide adapter view with the box showing the view without the adapter. So how do we determine what angle we are seeing? With high school math, of course. To work this out, you need a tape measure or two and a tripod. You roll out one tape measure, place the camera on the tripod in the middle of the tape measure's tape, about one to two meters back. Measure the distance from the center of the tape to the bottom of the lens. This is D. Up the f-stop on your camera to around 16 or so to ensure that the tape measure will be contained within the depth of field from edge to edge. You want to be able to read the tape on both sides of your image at M1 and M2. This is likely to be very difficult with this adapter. Take one image without the adapter and take another image with the adapter fitted in place. Read M1 and M2 from both images the dimension V is M1 minus M2, and from high school math, the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite of the dimension over the adjacent dimension. 
and from there we can wangle a nice formula for our spreadsheet but you have to be careful because some spreadsheets return angles in radians which you need to convert to degrees well you don't need to but it's nice to know the angle in degrees what you're really after is the ratio between the two different angles subtended by the lenses here is what one of the test views look like notice the distinct barreling in this shot Niwa claims that the adapter gets 0.45 times but what we get is 0.79 times on the 67 millimeter and 0.76 times on the 52 millimeter. This is clearly a big disappointment. So in summary, you don't get what you pay for. The resolution is low and horrid. The chromatic aberration is the worst I've ever seen. But worst of all, the wide field multiplier is nowhere near as wide as advertised. For $10, I expected shoddy quality. However, I did not expect a fraudulent zoom factor. I complained and was offered a refund. But all I want is for all of their advertisements to be updated to indicate the actual magnification. I've sampled three adapters so far from different eBay sellers, all claiming 0.45 zoom, and all of them are 0.76 or more. Is this really a Neewer product? If so, I strongly advise against purchasing anything at all from Neewer. $10 for only a slightly wider view and destroying most of the image is definitely not good value.